Dabs represent the shape of the end of your brush. These dabs repeat in various ways to create the illusion of a brush stroke, but you can also scatter dabs and even dab with them. If you think about real life examples of dab shapes, that may be useful for understanding how this property can come in handy. For example, the pointed tip of a pencil, the rounded tip of a pastel, or the flat edge of a palette knife. Because the shape of the tool can affect how media is applied to the canvas, you can get a variety of looks just by changing the shape of your brush. Dabs can be found in almost every art application. They are just a grayscale image that is stamped onto the canvas. The dab color can be substituted for any color you select in Rebel. The white color in the dab preview shows where the brush makes the most contact with the canvas. The gray areas are where the brush makes lighter contact. The darkest area surrounding the dab will be 100% transparent. The areas of contact define the shape of the brush and the opacity of the brush strokes. If I use black to paint a horizontal overlapping stroke, you can see that the center is the darkest and the edges are the lightest. I'll select the pencil's round hard and paint a stroke. Now you can see that the dab is only one flat color, so the stroke is flat too. There are three basic dab shapes in Rebel. First is circular. This is any dab that is round, whether it is feathered, textured, or otherwise. A hard edge circle is the most basic dab you can make in an art application. While the shape of this brush is simple, it can be modified to create a wide variety of looks. Starting with the shape of this dab, we can make the edges harder or softer, which will result in strokes that are hard like a pencil or soft like an airbrush. We can do this in a number of different ways. First, you can change the shape of the dab to choose either a hard or soft edge. Second, you can modify the edges of the dab. And third, you can create or edit a dab to make a custom shape. I'll go with the first option and select the soft airbrush. This brush uses a dab that is circular, but it has a strong feathering along the edges. This creates a gradient that fades slowly from opaque to transparent. Let's go to oils and select fat bristle. This is a captured dab that may have been scanned from a photo or perhaps created digitally. This dab is more intricate, so we're able to see each individual bristle in the dab. If I make a horizontal stroke with this brush, you can see that there is no feathering, only sharp bristles. Dabbing with captured dabs also works quite well. There are also flat dabs that can be angled using pen expressions like direction, tilt, and rotation. Many of these brushes are using grain, which can also affect the shape of the brush. For now, just be aware that if your dab looks different when you paint on the canvas with it, that could be why. You can disable grain by changing it to plain. I'll return to the soft airbrush, and currently the shape is set to round soft. The shape you choose for a brush doesn't have to be final. In fact, using the same static shape over and over will begin to look repetitive. For a more natural looking painting, you'll want to add lots of randomness to your brush to eliminate any repeating patterns. In the case of shapes, you can feel free to change them at any time to randomize the stroke. This is why I keep the brush creator handy while I'm painting. If I sample a variety of dabs, rather than a soft airbrushed look, I can get all sorts of unique shapes and strokes. The media and other properties remain unchanged. A shape change doesn't have to be drastic. In fact, it would probably be best to make changes that are more subtle so you aren't painting with two vastly different dabs. If I select the chalk brush, you can see that it's using a captured dab. If I wanted to vary the dab shape for this brush, I'd probably want to stick to the few captured dabs that look like chalk or create my own variations. Otherwise, choosing something like a round feathered dab may cause this to look less like chalk. Rebel doesn't come with many dab shapes, but it's very easy to create your own. You can do this in a number of ways. First, you can illustrate your own dab shapes on the canvas or convert photographs or other images into dabs. I'll use the smooth pen to draw a hollow wave shape on the canvas. I can paint with any color. What's important is the opacity I use because that will be captured in the brush. So be sure not to paint on the background if you want it to be transparent and use opaque paint if you want the dab to be fully opaque. Next, I will make a selection around the dab. This selection should be square, so hold shift so that it matches the aspect ratio of the dab preview. Adjust the selection and try to optimize the negative space around the dab shape and center it. 
Next, open the shape selector and at the bottom of the panel, choose import selection. The dab is captured and appears inside the shape selector. You can rename it in the Rebel library folder, but you'll need to use the refresh button or the file won't be found. Any shapes you create or import will automatically appear in the brushes shapes folder in your Rebel library. If these are linked to a brush variant, you will need to include them in the correct folder for a brush to work properly. So be sure to back up both the brush and the shape. Now if I paint a stroke with the smooth pen set to this shape, I get a really interesting stroke. I can add a number of properties to turn this into a less repetitive and more practical brush, but this should give you an idea of how to capture dabs. You may want to consider creating your dabs on specific canvas sizes to ensure that they are consistent with Rebel's default dabs and not too large or too small to be useful. Rebel's dabs are 512 by 512 pixels, and the maximum brush size is 700 pixels, so anything larger than that is just wasted space unless you have some other reason for making the dabs larger. You can also import pre-existing shapes made by other Rebel users, or perhaps even convert dabs from other applications like Corel Painter or Photoshop. Simply place Rebel shapes in the Shapes folder, and they should appear in the application. You may need to use the Refresh button. There is also an Import Texture button in the Shape Selector. You can remove textures or shapes as well, and show them as a large or small list. This panel can even be pinned on screen if you want to keep it open. It may take some work to convert dabs from other applications. Most likely you will need to create a canvas in that application, make a dab with the brush, then save it as a PNG or JPEG and import the image into Rebel. 